Welcome to the Synthesis of Yoga, the book that changed my life. We have finally reached the last episode of this chapter and also this part of uh, Synthesis of Yoga, the introduction where the conditions of synthesis he brings out and he synthesizes various schools. This is the last episode today. And uh, in our previous episode, which was 30th episode, he gave us this whole spectrum of integral realization and liberation, where uh, at the level of individual, universal and transcendent, and the whole being, where love, knowledge and will everything realizes the divine and enter into that space of salokya mukti sayujya mukti salokya mukti and sadharmya mukti three levels of liberation so that the divine's cosmic action become possible the human mold become a reflection capable of reflecting, reflecting perfectly the divine consciousness and pouring it out into the world for a universal action, for a perfection under the conditions of human life, human type. Now we move on to this 31st episode, paragraph number 18 of the last chapter. The link to this chapter is in the Description. Let's move on. Perfection includes perfection of mind and body, both the gross body and the subtle body. So the perfection includes perfection of mind and body, so that the highest results of Raja Yoga and Hatha Yoga should be contained in the widest formula of the synthesis, finally to be effected by mankind. Mankind is the evolving entity. Nature has specially created human beings who can become self-conscious and take up the yoga forward and become aware of the subconscious yoga of nature and make it more conscious and accelerate it. In that journey, the perfection of the body and mind, which is effectuated by Hatha Yoga and Raja Yoga, that is included in Integral Yoga without having to resort to the elaborate methods of Hatha Yoga or the Samadhi methods of Raja Yoga. Here there is much more dynamic open method by opening directly to the divine consciousness and the Shakti pours in and purifies and transforms the instrument in a very dynamic condition so that you can pour into the world or rather, the divine consciousness force pours into the world through you when there is an integral purity across the instrumental layers. The perfection, perfection includes perfection of mind and body so that the highest results of Raja Yoga and Hatha Yoga should be contained in the widest formula of the synthesis, finally to be effected by human mankind. So in our mankind's evolution, we must consider the perfection of the body and mind as envisioned by Hatha Yogins as well as Raja Yogins. All that they have conceived, their legitimate aims. What Sri Aurobindo is bringing in is a different way of arriving at that aims in a much more rapid way. And if mankind is to arrive at its greater perfection, these perfections are to be included. 
in its conception of percept, uh, perfection. So the highest results of Raja Yoga and Hatha Yoga should be contained in the widest formula of the synthesis finally to be effected by mankind. At any rate, a full development of the general mental and physical faculties and experiences attainable by humanity through yoga must be included in the scope of the integral method. A full development of the faculties of the body and mental range that is attainable by humanity through yoga must be included in the scope of the integral method. At any rate, a full development of the general mental and physical faculties. General mental and physical faculties. Often we see very commonly in various yogic schools, particularly the yogic schools that are not looking at, for example, a mental development. They look down upon it. Only when the mind is well developed, then only a powerful action in the world become possible. So there is no neglecting of any of the faculties. Or just like those who follow the devotion path may neglect the development of the mind, those who follow the mental path path of knowledge may develop the mental capacities but neglect the development of the heart and its emotions. All faculties are to be refined, purified and developed into its highest divine possibilities. So the general mental and physical faculties and experiences attainable by humanity through yoga must be included in the scope of the integral method. Nor would these have any raison d'etre unless employed for an integral mental and physical life. Very reason for existing, existence of rational intelligence, emotional being and its emotional connections and joys and the will and its creative intelligent will why should they exist in nature? Why should nature create them in the first place? They are to be put for the right use of mental and physical life. So perfection of these instruments is necessary and put for the right use. So nor would these have any raison d'etre unless employed for an integral mental and physical life. Knowledge, love and will they all must be put for the right purpose. Such a mental and physical life would be, in its nature, a translation of the spiritual existence into its right mental and spiritual values. So when we put them into the right use, with the right reflection, in the perfected instruments of the spiritual existence into this, our lower nature. That will be the right translation of spiritual existence into its right mental and physical values. Because there is always a translation. The higher gets translated into the terms of the lower. In that translation, when the lower nature is not capable of reception, there is always a translation loss, a transmission loss, a distortion, an imperfection that come into the picture. So when the purity and perfection are established in the lower nature, then the translation of the higher into the lower, the spiritual existence into the terms of mind, life and body, into the values of mind, life and body, that will acquire increasing perfection. So, 
such a mental and physical life would be in its nature a translation of the spiritual existence into its right mental and physical values. Thus, we would arrive at a synthesis of the three degrees of nature and of the three modes of human existence which she has evolved or is evolving. Here he is going back to that second chapter where he brought in the picture of three steps of nature. The bodily life, the progressive mind and spiritual existence, spiritual self. And in the threefold life, the third chapter, he brought in how they interact and their interdependency. And the progressive mind cannot perfect the bodily life by itself, nor does the spiritual life, spiritual self, spiritual existence by itself can perfect the bodily life. It needs the progressive mind. Progressive mind needs the spiritual self and its powers to perfect the bodily life. So there is an interconnection, interdependency between these three layers. So he's coming back to that three degrees of nature. Thus, we would arrive at a synthesis of the three degrees of nature and the three modes of human existence. These three modes are the bodily life, the progressive mind, mental existence, and then there's a spiritual existence that is possible. A synthesis of all three will become possible, which she has evolved or is evolving. So thus we would arrive at a synthesis of the three degrees of nature and of the three modes of human existence which she has evolved or is evolving. We would include in the scope of our liberated being and perfected modes of activity the material life, our base. Material life, our base. And the mental life, our intermediate instrument. Mental life is our intermediate instrument and we are moving towards the spiritual life. So that three steps of nature and that sequence become very clear here. We would include in the scope of our liberated being and perfected modes of activity, the material life, our base, so our material life has to be perfected and that perfection requires not only the progressive mind but also the spiritual force and its powers brought into it and transformed. So that is our material life, our base and our the mental life, our intermediate instrument. That is the in-between intermediate instrument. Nor would the integrality to which we aspire be real or even possible if it were confined to the individual. Now he's a new perspective he's bringing in. Traditionally, yoga had been concerned with the perfection of the individual, not perfection, liberation of the individual, individual liberation. The soul of the individual liberating into the transcendent. That had been the aim, predominantly. And he is saying that is insufficient from our integral perspective. Nor would the integrality to which we aspire be real or even possible. Integrality is not possible if it were confined to the individual. Why is it that integrality will not be possible if we limit our yoga only to the individual? Why can't we just perfect ourselves as individuals by following the path of integral yoga? Very legitimate question. Let's see. Since our divine perfection embraces the realization of ourselves in being, in life and in love through others as well as through ourselves, the extension of our liberty and of its results in others 
would be the inevitable outcome as well as the broadest utility of our liberation and perfection. So, we are woven into the life that is around. We don't exist in isolation. Our individual perfection is not possible without pouring into the collective, into the larger life that is surrounding. The, our divine perfection embraces the realization of ourselves in being, in life and in love. In being, in life and in love. Love is the space where there is relationship. All types of relationship in the play of life. So in being, in life and in love. Through others as well as through ourselves. So the divine perfection embraces the realization of ourselves in being, in life and in love through others as well as through ourselves. Others become part of us. We become part of others in one divine existence. The extension of our liberty and of its results in others. There is an extension of our liberty and its result in others. So the progress made by an individual naturally get transmitted into the collective life. The extension of our liberty and its result in others would be the inevitable outcome. That is inevitable because we cannot make the progress in isolation. It would be inevitable outcome as well as the broadest utility of our liberation and perfection. It is also the utility of the integral perfection we are seeking. So the, there is a collective evolution that is unfolding. So the one who is opening himself, herself to the integral yoga is also opening to the collective evolution of our species on earth. So since our divine perfection embraces the realization of ourselves in being, in life and in life, through others as well as through ourselves, the extension of our liberty and of its result in others would be the inevitable outcome as well as the broadest utility of our liberation and perfection. So the utility is that we can extend it into others. And the constant and inherent attempt of such an extension would be towards its increasing and un ultimately complete generalization in mankind. So there is a complete generalization of the divine consciousness in mankind already set in motion by the yoga of nature. And we become the instruments to accelerate that process, not merely liberating ourselves into the transcendent, but bringing the transcendent consciousness into the universalized being and pouring that into the whole of humanity. So, whole mankind is destined to be divinized. So the, and the constant and inherent attempt of such an extension would be towards its increasing and ultimately complete generalization in mankind. So the spiritual destiny of our species, spiritual progress evolving towards our spiritual nature will become generalized in humanity. And we are already into that. There is a growing recognition of 
spirituality and yoga has been recognized as the means for it and the 21st june is international yoga day now so all these are signs that yoga is getting and its goal is getting increasingly recognized and generalization of the spiritual existence in humanity is inevitable but we must ensure that the goal of yoga is not limited to individual liberty individual liberation but we must conceive an integral perfection an integral liberation an integral realization and extend therefore that realization by its very nature into the whole of humanity it's a natural by product actually the divinizing of the normal material life of man and of his great secular attempt of mental and moral self culture in the individual and the race by this integralization of a widely perfect spiritual existence would thus be the crown alike of our individual and of our common effort so there is this great secular attempt of mental and moral self culture with the arrival of the progressive mind there is a secular effort of the mind to help humanity to move towards greater perfection but the mind by itself no matter it tries its best by bringing in philosophies and ethics and morality all that it cannot really perfect it needs the spiritual knowledge spiritual consciousness spiritual powers to perfect so divinizing of the normal material life of man and of his great secular attempt of mental and moral self culture in the individual and the race by this integralization of a widely perfect spiritual existence integralization of a widely perfect spiritual exist existence spiritual existence as it grows in the individual it breaks out of the mold of the tiny little ego boundary and spreads and extends itself in the process of universalization in the process it lifts up larger humanity so this integralization of a widely perfect spiritual existence would thus be the crown alike of our individual and of our common effort the common effort of humanity and our individual effort the very crown of it is this vast extension integralization of the spiritual existence in humanity such a consummation being no other than the kingdom of heaven within reproduced in the kingdom of heaven without would also be would be also the true fulfillment of the great dream cherished in different terms by the world's religions all the religions of the world came out of spiritual experiences of its founding members there is always a seed experience of the founding members they saw a possibility through their own personal experience a divine existence and they formulated their experience and that formulations later fossilized and became religions there is always within the religion a kernel an aspiration for the heaven there is a heaven within and that heaven can be brought on earth so such a consummation being no other than the kingdom of heaven within reproduced in the kingdom of heaven without unfortunately some heavens no sorry some religions do not see the possibility of 
heaven on earth. Their concept of heaven is somewhere in the other worlds. And worldly life is seen as a misery and sin or whatsoever it is. End of the day, something to be discarded and you are supposed to go into the heaven or the timeless existence beyond. Whereas the other dimension is bringing that heaven here on earth so that there is life divine on earth. No other than the kingdom of heaven within reproduced in the kingdom of heaven without would be also the true fulfillment of the great dream cherished in different terms by the world's religions. World's religions have cherished this dream of heaven, eventually bringing it onto the earth, heaven on earth. The widest synthesis of perfection possible to thought is the sole effort entirely worthy of those whose dedicated vision perceives that God dwells concealed in humanity. God dwells concealed in humanity. This had been the very central conception of religions that sprang up from India. There, are, there is a divine consciousness dwelling in humanity. Every individual is potentially divine and this can be brought out. And that is what we are looking at. The widest synthesis of perfection possible to thought, possible to thought, the mind can conceive of, Possible to thought is the sole effort entirely worthy of those whose dedicated vision perceives that God dwells concealed in humanity. It is concealed. Concealed and it has to be revealed from the obscurities, from the concealment. It has to be brought out and revealed in this material life on earth and that is what integral yoga is looking at there is an integral method an integral result and the method is the method of nature herself and nature is working through lower nature and higher nature in lower nature it is slow and tardy in higher nature it is self-aware and rapid moving rapidly towards divine realization and that realization growing in the individual the divine consciousness and breaking the molds of the ego and transcending the ego and universalization of the being and existing simultaneously in the transcendent in the universal and individual as the center of action of the divine consciousness perfectly reflected here in the lower nature. So the lower nature is undergoing transformation and humanity is rapidly evolving towards its spiritual destiny. And this is the crisis in the world. We are moving towards that spiritual destiny and those who have the calling for integral yoga, it is the divine nature, the divine Shakti who is calling and selecting the instruments, whoever is ready so that she can put to the right use these instruments for the divine perfection in the world, moving towards that great fulfillment that ages always dreamt. So with that, we have completed the first part of the synthesis of yoga the conditions of synthesis and what synthesis is and what Sri Aurobindo's integral yoga is in its gist, in its essence. Thank you for being with me in this journey. I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I'm learning so much through this journey. Please do share your insights, your aha moments and uh, Ensure that you have subscribed to this channel 
so that we can continue the journey. Thank you. See you next week.